Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Welcome everybody to the Safina Society. Nothing but facts. Live stream on the first day of Ramadan. Last night was the first night of Tarawih in I think the whole world, right? Omar, I don't think anyone, um, there were any differences this time around. Uh, not that, yeah. And not even that those differences really make such a huge deal, but it is um, uh, first night of Ramadan at the Masjid last night. When I had to leave, I couldn't even get my shoes. I lucky. Like like yeah, I had to leave left with my hoof. I couldn't even get my shoes. There are people praying right into the hall, right? Right into the atrium of the masjid. The masjid, you come in, immediately there's a little room to the right. That's like the sort of like a auxiliary room. It's like a little room. All right, down a little hallway to the right. But then you go into, you, as soon as you walk in, there's a long atrium, basically. Like a foyer, basically. And then in that foyer, the sisters can enter in on the right, and the brothers would enter in straight, right, in that foyer. And so then the, the masjid is uh, a, a long rectangle, right? With the sister side, it's, it's a little thinner, and then the brother side is a little bit wider. So that's why you, you walk in, the brother's entrance is straight, sister's entrance is on the right. It's almost like the, imagine you take a huge rectangle, and then you cut a piece out like this, right? You cut a, you cut a piece out of the rectangle like that. So the sisters will enter here, and this is their section. And then, uh, then there is the front section. So the musallin were spilled outside into the atrium all the way to the exit door. Right. So, mashallah, beautiful sight to see. Beautiful sight to see. So everyone's basically, uh, right now, what time is it in England? Let me, let me see what time is it in the, in the UK. Yeah, I mean, I got, open up the international clock. London, it's 5.46 right now in the UK, so about an hour or so. And then their time, their time is going to switch. Because you know that their GMT thingy switches later than ours. Okay. Um, Ahmed Deed saying, is the four imams a good book? There's two of them. There's one by GF Haddad, which is excellent. And there's one by... Abu Zahra, which is also excellent. So I recommend you read both. Okay. Let's let's go. Irada Arts, Basim. Uh, you got to get Irada Arts. It's a great gift, by the way. Uh, Irada Arts, their stuff is phenomenal. We have one of their sira downstairs. Phenomenal. You could sit there reading it all day because there's just so much stuff there. Uh, Bint Khalil says, what should one do if they have five years of fast to make up? By missing it intentionally and they can't afford the fidya. Well, it would be kafara since you left it intentionally. That's a, as a technicality. It won't be a fidya. It'll be a kafara, uh, which is a lot of money for every day. So you owe the days for sure. So you got to make up the days. But then that debt is up on you. If you cannot pay it, you don't pay it now. The precondition of a kafara, paying a kafara, is that you can afford it, Right. If you can't afford it, then you don't pay that now, okay? However, if you come up on that money, then keep rem rem remember that you have that debt. Let's say it's, it'll be um, feeding 60 poor Muslims per day. $600 per day. Let's get the calculator. Is it per day or is it per day? Wait, per yeah. Really? The whole month of Ramadan? So, Whether you miss 1 or, or 20 is the same? How? So it's like if you miss 1, it's yeah. 60, but it doesn't add up. So it's just like if you have that debt, it's still 1. It's still You're that's kidding. So miss, So the one who pays, who, miss, who, who offends the month 20 times and the one who offends the month one time? I think so. I have to double, double check, check that. that. It's because it's, it's, it's 60, feeding 60 poor Muslims, that's $600 a day that you miss. Times a month, 30. Times five. S sister, I hope, I hope you can be a millionaire because you owe $90,000. Okay. Go make, make friends with some millionaires so they can pay this off for you. You've got $90,000. $90, it might be less than 10, though, because half of that is 
half size, how much? This much is like a bowl of wheat. It's like this much food. That's it. So, so how much is that? You want to? Omar is like advocating on behalf of this. You know the sister? He's advocate, no. sister. You got an advocate here. You got an advocate, but it's right that it like, what is one meal of food cost? Homemade, not restaurant. Okay, click that. Click that. Two point two kilograms of wheat price. Sister, you got a you guys protecting your rights already. But let's even say it was half of that. That's 45 grand. And by the way, if you can pay it, you can pay it in another country, right? Because this is an exorbitant amount of money, right? Actually, I mean, technically, when you, got, when you grow up, you realize 90 grand is not even that much money, right? But when you're young, you're like, wow, 90,000. No, yeah. So how much is that amount of money in like rupees or... Or um, now, Bint Khalil just saying, I'm not asking for myself. All right, sorry, but may make sure we she she doesn't get herself uh, accused here. It's not it's not her. Okay, but she's. I mean, I'm sure she gets that. She might be like a leader in her community. She gets that question all the time. People, it's crazy that people didn't fast, right? Now, now, tell me something. Um, did you find any currency? Like, what is what is this much food in India cost? I know Pakistan is really bad. Right? It could be a dollar. It could be a dollar, right? This much food could be one dollar in some country. I think the best bet is actually to put money into traveling overseas. And yeah. Doing it over there because you're gonna save a lot of money. Oh, oh, you can you can just call. You could call. Hey, how how much how much you 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 call? How much is this much food? Right, two handfuls of food. They tell you, you can get two handfuls of food for 60 cents, for 50 cents. So we took you from $10 to 50 cents, right? And that's where something that's permitted for you to do. Bin Sulaiman is like, subhanAllah. 90,000 is a lot, says Bin Sulaiman. But you know what? It's all relative, right? It's all relative. And you'll realize someday that, you know, If you live in the financial world, not that much. Can I fil We continue reading about um, Dawood al Ta'i. Did we start Dawood al Ta'i last week? Let's read it. Dawood al Ta'i. Okay. Abu Sulaiman, Dawood ibn Nusayr al Ta'i. Can a kabir al-Shat? Could worry the 20 dinar and fell for a few 20 years. He he had a he is a big person in the in the qawm. Okay. He is a big person in the realm of Zuhud. Sami'atul Ustaz Abu Abu Ali Daqqaq yaqul kana sabab Zuhd Dawood al-Ta'i annahu kana yamru bi Baghdad fa marra yawman fa nahahu an-nas 'an at-tariq bayna yaday Humayd al-Tawsi fa iltafata Dawood fa ra'a Humayd fa qala Dawood uffin li dunya sabaqaka biha Humayd ولزم البيت وأخذ في الجهد والعبادة. هي وسمعت بغداد سمعت ببغداد بعض الفقراء يقول إن سبب زهدي أنه سمع نائحه تنوح وتقول بأي خديك تبدي البلاء وأي عينيك إذا سلا وقيل كان سبب زهدي أنه كان يجلس أبا حنيفة. He was a companion of Abu Hanifa. It is said. So Abu Hanifa one time said to him, he said, uh, the discussion is complete. Discussion of knowledge is complete. So Dawood Ta'i said, then what, then what do we have to do now? He said, we have to, now we have to act upon it. Okay. So it's the action upon it. And so that's basically where um, Dawood Ta'i, he has an influence with Abu Hanifa. Okay. He has an influence with Abu Hanifa. وقيل حجم جنيد الحجام دو حجم جنيد الحجام داود الطائف أعطاه دينارا فقيل له هذا إسراف فقال لا عبادة لمن لا مروءة له. Okay. Uh, 
it looks here that Junaid is Sadiq uh, did hijama okay, with a man. No, 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 no. Junaid al Hajjam. Okay, it had nothing to do with Junaid al Sadiq. Junaid al Hajjam. Dawood al Ta'i did hijama. Okay. And uh, gave the man a dinar, a gold coin. The dinar is gold, the dirham is silver. Dinar with dirham. Okay. He said, This is excessive. A gold coin for one hijama? And then Dawood al Ta'i said, the ibad is not accepted from someone who has no respectability. Muru'a. That means you overpay, you, you help out, you don't be stingy, things like that. وَكَانَ يَقُولُ فِي اللَّيْلِ He used to say at night, إِلَهِ هَمُّكَ عَطَّلَ عَلَيَّ الْهُمُومَ الدُّنْيَوِيَّ My concern with, with, with your affair, meaning like cleaning my heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has busied me from the dunya. وَحَالَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ الرَّقَّاتِ وَقَالَتْ دَايَةُ دَاوُدَ الطَّائِ لَهُ أَمَا تَشْتَهِ الْخُبْسِ Dawood al Ta'i had a, a, a worker, basically, in the house, a servant. She said, would you like some bread? Don't you want bread? فَقَالَ بَيْنَ مُضْغٍ مُضْغِ الْخُبْزِ وَشُرْبِ الْفَتِيتِ قِرَاءَةُ خَمْسِينَ آيَةً right, Between a bite of bread and then uh, a drink of water, I'm going to recite 50 eyes. He was a Zahid. He didn't want his dunya come to, 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 he didn't want ever to enter himself into forgetfulness of Allah Ta'ala, even eating a loaf of bread, a piece of bread. So many people fasting right now. And I just saw somebody receiving a, someone sick getting, listen, listen to this, Afghani bre- or, or, or um, Turkish bread warmed up on a fi- on a uh, stove on the flame of the stove and they took butter this person's sick they need the calories put butter m- put butter pieces of butter on the plate microwaved the plate so there's like melted butter on the plate then took that that charred right like you know when you when you heat up bread on the stove right and then it's got like it's it's hot, but it's naturally charred at, on the edges. Put that on top of the butter, pushed it in. Then a nice tall cup of tea, like with sugar, and served it to them, and they ate it. All right. So even a piece of bread, as Dawood al is saying, it could be a luxury for some people. So, and some of these ethnic breads, like Afghani bread, daisy bread with the butter on it. What is it called? Non. Um, Turkish bread, all these things, like it's a minor thing, but the bread in some of these cult- uh, cultures is like really good bread. <laughs> I mean, that stuff is, is really good bread. Could you imagine a naan right now with the butter on it, melting on it, and then someone gives you a serious chai, right? <laughs> and then you dip it in, and oh my goodness. So when Dawood Tha'i says, bread... Right? Between each bread and a drink, I'm going to recite 50 ayahs. He, he cannot stand ghafla. So, لَمَّا تُوفِيَ دَوُودُ رَآهُ بَعْضُ الصَّالِحِينَ فِي الْمَنَامِ وَهُوَ يَرْكُضُ After he died, maybe many times people see, uh, uh, people see uh, their friends after death. So, they saw him after death laying down. فَقَالَ لَهُ مَالَكْ They said, What's, what, what, what happened to you? Okay. مَالَكَ What happened to you? فَقَالَ أَسَّاعَةُ تَخَلَّصْتُ مِنَ السِّجْن Finally, I'm done with this jail that I was in. The dunya is a jail. Okay. فَاسْتَيْقَذَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ نَوْمِهِ He woke up. فَارْتَفَعَ الصِّيَاحُ بِقَوْلِ النَّاسِ مَا تَدَوُدُ الطَّائِ So he actually saw the dream before knowing that they would die, right? So, Allah, this dunya is a jail. But there's, you know, there's another thing, um, is that they say that the the paradise of the awliya begins in the dunya. You ever hear that? It's because the first step once a person reaches a nafs al-mutma'inna 
is that Allah fulfills the dreams of these people. He meaning he grants them what their soul desires of this dunya. And because they're in a state of ta'a, what they desire is not like absurd. If you ask someone who's in a state of disobedience of Allah and far from Allah, if you ask him, what would you like of the dunya, he won't stop. But the people of the, uh, the path of Allah, they have a contentment and they end up essentially, they only, it's only a few things that will just hit the spot for them and they're done with the dunya. They've gotten what they wanted from the dunya. And then they now start to climb the spiritual ranks because they're finished. They, they have what they wanted from the dunya, right? So they end up uh, having what, everything they wanted of the dunya, then going on with nothing other than all the spiritual ranks, and that's what they want. So it is said, the jannah of the awliya begins in this life. And that is the, when they attain the maqam of al-nafs al-mutma'inna. And nafs al-mutma'inna is the concept that they, have, they, they no longer fall into sins regularly. They no longer fall into that. You see, even the zuhad and the awliya, when they eat, there's barakah. Dawud al-Ta'i talking about bread like that. God is going on on about bread. I'll tell you what else. American bread is like, you know, oatmeal bread is the best. For American sliced bread, it's oatmeal bread. I'll tell you what you do. You put that on a flame. Then you get olive oil. <laughs> put some salt on the olive oil. And then some cheese. You're good to go. A cup of tea. What else do you want from the dunya? That's it. وَقَالَ لَهُ رَجُلٌ أَوْسِنِي فَقَالَ أَسْكُرُ الْمَوْتُ يَنْتَظِرُونَكُمْ Tell me, uh, give me advice. Dawood al-Ta'i said, the soldiers of death are waiting for you. SubhanAllah. Soldiers of death are waiting for you. وَدَخَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَيْهِ فَرَآهُ فَرَآ جَرَّةَ مَاءٍ إِنْ بَسَطَتْ عَلَيْهَا الشَّمْسِ فَقَالَ لَهُ أَلَا تُحَوِّلُهَا إِلَى الظِّلْ فَقَالَ دَوُدْ حِينَ وَضَعْتُهَا لَمْ يَكُنْ شَمْسُ وَأَنَا اسْتَحِي أَنْ يَرَانِ اللَّهُ أَمْشِي لِمَا فِيهِ هَوَى نَفْسِي سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ We know that in the sunnah you're not supposed to heat up your, uh, your water with the sun. You're not supposed to use the heat, the sun to heat up food. So I wonder if any scientists know, you know what's the, the interesting thing about this. Or what's the benefit of that? Because there must be a benefit. The Prophet said, do not, we know that we're allowed to warm ourselves up with the sun, but not our food. So, Dawud al-Ta'i had his bowl of water being warmed in the sun. He said, a man said to him, uh, came into his room, and he said, would you not um, move it away from the sun? Move it out of the way of the sun? Because that's not the sun. Dawud al-Ta'i said, um, when I put it there, there was no sun there. And now that the sun is there, I'm embarrassed to walk in front of Allah Ta'ala just for the desires of my nafs. Right? And he views it that way. How do we view it? We view it that I'm walking to the desire of my nafs knowing who provided it for me. And that it's going to extract shukr from me. That's the, the, the eating and the seeking of the nafs, of the shahwa, of someone who was also on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that yes I'm going for my shahwa but recognizing who provided this for me and who deserves the shukr for this right that's the and and then observing certain akhlaq so when you see people like hemaj like uh, they go collapse on the food like they've never seen food before and they don't see anyone around them and they're taking without thinking being considerate of who else wants to eat and being essentially like a beast about the food this is all makruh from the from the akhlaq you know bad akhlaq so when you go for the shahawat of your nafs you go to it you can go to it with a uh, in th- this attitude that i know who's providing it and i have a uh, set of manners okay um when I deal with these things. Because Dawud al is at another level. He doesn't go for shahawat al-nafs. He's like at another level. We don't know that level. We go for shahawat al-nafs. 
within a halal, and then with after the halal, then you go into it with an attitude of shukr. Okay. So a lot of brothers are answering back now, saying that uh, we have here uh, one per- person saying that the gro- grown-up Hazi is saying, leaving food in the sun, it makes it a mosh pit for bacteria. Abdul Hadi says, warming food in the sun could make it easier for it to get infected rather than over a flame, which is quick and hotter and it burns off everything bad. Okay. Okay. Gaga Lala is asking. We got Lady Gaga here on the stream asking where we can get oatmeal bread or Japanese milk bread. I never heard of that. Milk bread? Bread mixed with milk? Mashed up? Yeah, man. Too much, man. وَقَالَ أَبُ الرَّبِيعُ الْوَاسِطِ قُلْتُ لِدَوْدُ الطَّائِ أَوْسِنِي فَقَالَ سُمْ عَنِ الدُّنْيَا Fast from the dunya. اِجْعَلْ فِطْرَكَ الموت. Fast from the dunya and the iftar time is death. وَفِرْ مِنَ النَّاسِ كَفِرَارِكَ مِنَ الْأَسَدِ So this was, Dawud al Tai is a, 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 a very, very, very heavy da, uh, zahid, unlike many of the others. Unlike many of the others, he is a heavy zahid. Next, Abu Bakr al Tumistani. He is a friend of Ibrahim al Dabbagh. Okay. And he's from Nishapur, Persia. And this is entry number 54 of Risa al Risal al Qushayriya. He says, Al Ni'matu al Udma hi al Khuruj min al Nafas. من النفس والنفس أعظم حجاب بينك وبين الله. The greatest victory, the greatest blessing is to be is to be released from your ego, and the nafs or the ego is the greatest hijab between you and Allah. And nafs. That's why contradicting your nafs. That's what we're doing now, month of Ramadan. You contradict your nafs. You go against every day. You go against what your nafs wants. You do this once. Your nafs comes back stronger. You do it again, your nafs come back stronger. Eventually, your nafs stop coming back stronger. وَقَالَ الطَّرِيقُ وَاضِحٌ The path to Allah is clear. وَالْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةُ قَائِمَانِ بَيْنَ أَظْهُرِنَا The book and the sunnah are established here amongst us. وَفَضْلُ الصَّحَابَةِ مَعْلُومٌ The virtue of the companions are, is known. لِسَبْقِهِمْ إِلَى الْهِجْرَةِ because of their preceding us to the hijrah. فَمَنْ صَاحِبَ مِنَّ الْكِتَابَ وَالسُنَّةِ وَتَغَرَّبَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَالْخَلْقِ Whoever holds on to the book and the sunnah, contradict your nafs from time to time, regularly contradict your ego, stay away from creation too much, don't mingle too much with the creation. وَهَاجَرَ بِقَلْبِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Make hijrah Okay, with your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهُوَ الصَّادِقُ الْمُصِيبِ He is the one who is sincere and he is accurate. Because you can be sincere, but you're digging in a wrong, in an empty, uh, barren land. You're not going to find anything. Very sincere in Christianity. Very sincere in some other deen. You're not going to get anything out of this. But here he says, you're sadiq and you're musib. And how many people are musib? They're correct. They have the deen. They have everything here. Okay? Uh, they have everything in Islam. They have it all. They're in the right aqidah. They're in the right fit. But they put no effort. No sidq. Sidq is effort. Ikhlas is purity. But sidq is the effort. Right? And that's what we have a lot of. A lot of Muslims like, aqidah is right. Ibad is good. He's salih. If he dug a little harder, he would find everything bursting for him. Right? But they have there's a lack of him, a lack of sidq. All right, uh, well, those in uh, England, it's iftar time in England. It's a little bit later in Wales, but some of the brothers in England are breaking their fast now, or as some of them say, opening their fast. What do you say, Habib? Opening the fast or break the fast? What, break the fast, right? Not open the fast. Like, uh, but uh, so uh, Allah Ta'ala accepts from you 
and don't forget us in your dua while you're doing this because the dua between the adhan and your first bite of food for the day it's a blessed dua Mansur ibn Ammar he is the father Abu Sari Mansur ibn Ammar min ahli Maru he was from the Persians وَقِيلَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ بَشْنَشُ وَأَقَامَ بِالْبَصْرَةِ He ended up moving to Basra. And he was from the kibar of the awliya. قَالَ مَنْ جَزَعَ مِنْ مَصَائِبِ الدُّنْيَا تَحَوَّلَتْ مُصِيبَتُهُ فِي دِينِهِ If you react poorly, this is so important, if you react poorly to the calamities of the dunya, they will become calamities of your deen. Because when you get a calamity of the dunya, and you lose your faith, you have no iman, okay? And you re- react to that calamity with sins, your dunya will suffer from that. I mean, your deen will suffer next. Your deen will suffer. It, you, you will have a crisis of iman. And many people have that. And really, what the, what the calamity showed is that there wasn't much iman in the first place. That's all it is. It's like when you break, when you break dough, and you see, you see, let's say, a pie. And there's like, uh, let's say, some fruit under the pie. You don't say we, the, 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 the bread has become pie. No, there, there, there was fruit there from the beginning. Likewise, when you break a, in, in a calamity, you have a calamity and it breaks. And what comes out of it is disbelief in, and no belief in Allah. That's what was always there. Right? That's what was always there. So the calamity just breaks. It, it cracks the outer illusions and it shows us the reality. Okay? How do you deal with long term calamities? Long term sabr. I've seen people go through calamities that are 20 years old. For 20 years. That doesn't mean they're suffering every second of the day, but it's affected them for 20 years and they're out of it. And they're just like, sometimes they're like, I don't even know how I did it, right? I do not know how I did it. So it's just a long-term term persistence of sabr and, and try to find a way where there's a little bit of uns in it. Try to find some, uh, some intimacy in the calamity, right? Because what else can you do? Just have to look at it positively, okay? Who's talking here? What's going on here, Ramadan Mubarak? No, but are you also on Discord by the same name? Yes. Are you on Discord? No, I don't play Discord. No, they're talking to each other. Oh, they're talking to each other. Okay. What's the hikmah of going through a calamity if your response would be bad? Because the calamity is going to keep coming, and you're going to change the way you respond. So someone may be responding in a very bad way. In the beginning, really badly. But then they adjust, they adjust, they adjust, and they come finally to submission. And now it's growth after that. How can we get rid of anthropomorphic feelings from shaitan when reading about Allah's attributes? No, it's it, you just by knowledge. You just know if it crosses your mind, then Allah is different from that. Simple as that. And then after that, the wasawas is not against you. Uh, UTMSA, UTMMSA says, can you redefine, can you define reacting poorly a bit more? Very simply, you reacted by disobeying Allah. That's it. You reacted by doing sins. Sins could be with your tongue, such as saying, why did Allah do this to me? Sins could be with your deeds, saying, well, there's no point in praying. Sins could be with your heart by saying, where's, oh Allah, where's your mercy? Astaghfirullah Right? So that's how simple it is. Reacting by committing sins. That's it. How do we deal with the concepts? Uh, th- yeah, let me find it here. Yeah. The, how do we deal with the concept of what Allah decrees? Yeah, it always does that. How do we deal with the concept of what Allah decrees is for the best if calamities can lead to sin or kufr? Allah's decree leads to the best, but you have to do your part in accepting it. I can guarantee you, 
If you were to train with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he will lead you to a good-looking body, right? But you have to obey him. You can't, uh, when he tells you, wake up at 5 in the morning and go run 5 miles, then you show up to me, you can't skip that. You got to do it, right? So when the pain is being brought, when the coach brings you something that you don't like, you have to accept it because he knows what he's doing. He's, he, w- he is leading you. It's just some people, they don't want to be led. They want everything cozy and entitled and, and they don't want any pain whatsoever. That's not, that's not how it works. That's not how it works in the dunya, let alone in life. What is the reward for keeping the intention for the sake of Allah before a good deed? Uh, in order for Allah Ta'ala to reward a deed, there must be ikhlas and there must be sunnah. In other words... An intention, a deed is only rewarded by who you seek your reward from. So intention is basically saying, Oh Allah, I'm seeking, I'm doing this action only for the sake of your being pleased with me. Or only for the sake that you can give me such a such a reward. Whatever it is. Okay. I, if I understood Maryam's question properly. UTMMSA, intentionally or unintentionally? No, intentionally. We're talking only when you react to something bad happening. What matters is what you did willfully. That's what matters. What's the ruling on men's aura amongst other men? It is navel to the top of the knee. Some opinions held that a little bit above the knee can be overlooked, but that's a minor, minority opinion. Okay. Let's finish this uh, biography and then we'll can take more questions. Oh, that's it. That's the end of the biography. So we'll stop there on Mansur ibn Ammar's biography. We'll take a couple QAs and then we'll wrap it up. We may finish early today. So everyone's uh, in the UK, they're eating. Um, in, in the US, they're, they're bit, maybe a bit tired, dizzy, first day of fasting. Maybe they didn't have a strong suhoor. I heard a scholar that said that uh, whoever does an atom's worth of good uh, will see it on the day of judgment and likewise of evil. But that, and, and some say that it's in the dunya too. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Let me give you an example. If a man goes into battle in jihad, and he kills a thousand of the enemy. Okay? Then he gets killed. He, did, he didn't live to see the good deeds that he did. Right? He didn't live to see the victory. So that's the, that's the proof that you don't always see it in the dunya. We are trying to have three special lectures for our Muslim community on campus. What campus is this, by the way? University of Tennessee. Um... University of Toronto, Mississauga. Um, who are some speakers that you would recommend to reach out to? Rami Nasur, Yasir Fahmi, Yahya Rodas. Um, why? Uh, Tom Facini was good too. Yeah. Our topical streams... Creams absorbed into the bloodstream and nullifier of wudu? No. There's no skin stream that is nullifier of of siyam or wudu. Is it sunnah to pray tarawih and tahajjud in the same night? Yeah, you pray tarawih is after Aisha, then you sleep a little bit, then tahajjud is before Fajr comes in, when you wake up for suhoor. How do we know which hadith from Imam Ali are authentic and not from Shia sources? Sh- by looking at the which of the Sunni hadith critics accepted it. There's a lot Imam, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal has a lot in his Musnad. Uh, Ashari engineer. Really wasn't even my ikhtilaf, but I had come to hear, hear of it because it got spread around. And it was the saying that the Prophet possesses 
absolute knowledge and absolute control over the dunya. And there, there's no real basis for that. And the, actually the books of Aqidah do mention that whoever says that such a doctrine, that that's a doctrine is kufr. Okay. Can you make a video or post somewhere how do you make your chai? I learned from a video actually. Any advice on ignoring intrusive thoughts and images? Barakallahu feek. Yes, recite a lot of Quran and the nur of the Quran okay, will push it out. Okay. Um, Bin Suleiman, how do you resist buying so much thobes? Because you can't resist looking drippy. Don't resist it. Buy the thobes. Allah. At least he's buying thobes and not like tattoos. Right? Buy the thobes and be as drippy as you want. What's wrong with that? And then come to the Muad Iftar. Have we begun Muad Iftar? You guys know Muad Iftars? <laughs> MBIC.org slash Muadda. So you can get married. Muadda. Can Monday's topic for the stream be a day in the life of Dawa? Maybe. Why not? We'll do it one of these days. What is the women's aura exactly? W- women to women. It is from the chest here down to the knee they're not supposed to show each other's chest to each other non-muslims talk about law of attraction is it empirical evidence or sunnah of allah or is it delusion no i think it's uh it's a matter of uh i do think it is actually you can break it down and you could say that It is, if you always think about something and you love it, by nature you're focusing on it and you're doing actions towards it, right? You call it what you want to call it, but that's what's happening. That's why you're getting a result because you're thinking about it all the time. And is it some mystical thing where the human's heart is connected and has an ability to pull at the world? We'll never know that, right? We'll just, we'll never know that. So there's no point to say it, and that's a fact, when we never know that. But have I heard that from the East? Yes, I have heard sayings from scholars saying that, uh, that, and they're not saying it as a fact. They're saying it as an observation that they think may be the case, is that human desire, when a human desires something so much, it impacts the world around them, and it starts, things start to change so that it could happen. But what I do believe in is focus. Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these law of attraction thing is living in a universe that Allah doesn't exist. I don't want to live in such a universe. These things you cannot do. There are things you can't do. And you need Allah to do them for you. Right? And law of attraction makes you the, the doer. You say, no. I'm going to do what I can do. And my heart is linked to, to asking Allah for this matter. And it is Allah who's going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to bother myself. I'm not going to exhaust myself trying to do something impossible. Allah has power. I don't have power. All I could do is ask the king. You ask the king one time, you'd have to think about it again. But these law of attractions, they said they're meditating all day, right? And all we do, we go to tahajjud every, nonstop. Never miss a tahajjud. Dua in sujood. Dua before salam of salah. Dua after the salam of salah. Dua before iftar. If Allah hears one of these da'wat, you're good to go. Umrah, all these things. Sadaqah, dua of others for you. Don't forget that. Help others so that Allah uh, hears their prayer. So you're putting it in the hands of the king. How could I have a world when I have a king and listen to people who live in a world who don't have that king? Right? You guys are exhausting yourself. We get the king to do it. Wallahi, we're pampered and spoiled. Muslim is pampered and spoiled. Right, I got the king. He's gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna do my part. And Allah loves al mulahin A man said, hypothetically, if you were to make a dua and Allah was to inform you that He has answered it, meaning meaning He will give it to you. I will give it to you. What do I do? He said, number one is to for, for you would fully believe in Allah. So, but what he said, Allah doesn't forget. He doesn't make mistakes. And it doesn't trick you. Okay? So, accept it. 
believe it. 100% Allah will give it to me. Number two, well, what do I do now? He said, you keep asking for it. Because Allah loves the one who keeps asking, keeps asking, keep asking for it. All right? Keep asking for it. Have sabr. Keep doing whatever it would take to be needed for this thing to happen. Keep working at it. That's what you would do. I think I think this is Lana Imad says, would you be willing to do an online Islamic uh, online spiritual talk for an Islamic organization in Toronto, Canada on April 16th? What is April 16th? What day of the week is it? Today is April 16th. Mm, we have class Sunday. We have class Sunday. That's the problem. Find another time. Yafa. Some folks make their intention when praying dhuhr for sunnah, for farj, for sunnah, instead of for sunnah, for nafil, for farj. It doesn't matter whether you intend it as sunnah or nafil, it's the same. It's the same. Bin Sulaiman, speaking of mawadda, what are the parameters of spitting halal game? What? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. English of the past decade is what we can oh, man. grasp. This brother wants to spit halal game. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that's when the, when Mawadda was doing the uh, the food campaign and making sandwiches for the poor. <laughs> oh my goodness! Let the slash riz. He said slash. What is riz? <laughs> Game fine. I understood. Stood that. W riz. What is riz all about? The, Omar knows all they, these things. Riz what? Residual. <laughs> what is riz? Like, it's like your game to but eat. what's the origin of the I word? I know what riz is, but I don't know where it came from. Yeah. See, see, I can understand a s- slang if I had I know the origin, yeah. and it's just easier to no, say it that no way. Origin. There's like, no origin. Some rapper said like, it. And like now I it's think like, that's what it is. The youth are using it. How did cap to come to mean lying? Cap me like you're covering the truth with a cap? That could be it. Who knows? Uh, thin air. That's the thing with the with the slang that comes out of thin air. You can't keep up with, right? Cap is kind of in the past though now. Like, yeah, that's I, I haven't heard cap. In a long cap time. is done. Okay. How is something a fad done from 6th grade to 8th grade? Right? <laughs> Someone said Riz is short for charisma. Charisma. Oh, that oh that makes now sense. I got it. That makes sense. Okay, okay, okay. No, we don't play those kinds of games when you try to get married. Yeah. Right? If you're trying to get married, just go, Allah says in the Quran, go through the door straight. Don't go watching these videos, uh, how to get a woman, all right, how to get charisma unlocked, Alpha male. how to do this. All right, how to what to say to a woman to make her feel that you're superior? We don't play these games, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And if a woman needs you to play these games, she's not the one. She's not good, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Allah says, "Enter the door from the front," right? Which means if you're interested in somebody, right? Just say it. Find someone to say it to the wali, right? And and then if if a woman needs you to be some kind of person that you're not. And you have to play all these charisma on demand games and stuff like that. It's nonsense, right? She's not. She's not good. I'm telling you right away. You go. You you're a Muslim guy. You need a woman, a, a sister who accepts someone who is muttaqi. All right, clean. Got a got a future ahead of him. Can lead a family. Humble. But you're gonna get someone who's not gonna like you just because, for example. You don't have this stuff that he's talking about. Forget it. She's a materialist, right? And she's, and likewise goes for the guys. Because if a guy comes and he's like, oh, well, I'm going to look at what kind of, um, I don't know what, what guys would look at um, when it comes to like, so so men have to have a game, right? In the, in the world of just, you know, like clubs and stuff, guys have to have like, they're, they're assessed by their, how they come in, how they look strategy what is it we don't do any of this stuff we're not doing this stuff right no i'm gonna come in humbly like if if you're gonna get married and i'm gonna humbly listen um this is me 
and and put I will pull, put the bar low. I'm a very humble, very humble guy. I'm gonna live a very simple life. We're gonna live by God's rules, but we're gonna be happy. That's it. Done with, right? She doesn't accept that. She wants some kind of game and some kind of uh, a Lamborghini and some kind of whatever it is, right? Then that that's not for you. It's not for us. It's not our style of doing things. And I wouldn't want that person hanging out with our circle, right? Guy or girl, whatever the guy. Now, what are, what would guys look at? They're gonna obviously look at simply nothing other than the body, right? The the just pure materialism and flesh. You want those guys around either, right? No. Yeah, beauty is not important. It's it's it's, it's essential. Attraction is essential, right? Uh, beauty is one of the greatest creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? Is ikhlas and niyyah a condition in order to be rewarded? Yes. Ikhlas and niyyah, it is, yes. It is. But could there possibly be Allah Ta'ala rewarding an action where you didn't act without an intention? Yes, that's possible. For example, Imam al-Ghazali one time said that he was about to put his pen in the ink pot. And he found a fly sitting on top of the ink. It crossed his mind, just push the fly in the ink, push it in, so I can get the ink. Right? It's his haq. The fly is on his ink pot. He could kill it if he wants to. He said, okay, I'll just delay for a second so that the fly could leave. Right? So the fly left. He saved its life. Right? Right? By not doing what he could have done. He never made an intention for that. He didn't say, okay, I hereby pronounce my intent to not kill this fly. No. But the mu'min who was usually doing good deeds and they do good deeds, and something just come from his heart. Right? Neither, he didn't do it for any worldly reason that could be rewarded. In dunya and akhirah. Just naturally came from his heart. That's sometimes one of the best deeds because you never think twice about it. Okay? Like it's what happens when like, your heart is so polished. It's just like naturally everything just... Yeah. Just his heart is just polished. Naturally, all his reactions, all his thoughts are good. Okay? What is the halal game for the wali? Praying next to her, Baba. Who? Bin Suleyman... <laughs> is now like the next Wali Ashadli, right? Uh, yes, if, I, if I'm receiving a suitor, I expect, if you're interested, I expect you to be different around me, if you're interested to my daughter, right? In my daughter. I expect you to be a bit different around me, but I'm, I'm not a fool either. I'm not going to say... <laughs> And then be so impressed, right? <laughs> no, I'm not some... Fo- uh, you can't fool me that easily. But um, I do expect to be treated a bit differently. Like, you want something from me, right? Because the wali, his approval is necessary, right? You, uh, you want something from me. So I do expect you to be- behave a bit differently, right? But not in a way that's so, like, superficial. And if you try that stuff, I know that you're a superficial person if you think that works, Right? Can you do any du'a for which of prayer? Yes, you can. Yes, any you can make du'a in any salah. In any salah, you can make du'a. Hanafis have different rules for that, so you want to check that out. But you can make du'a in any salah. Can they, they make uh, du'a in wudu? Yeah. Hanafis, yes, but they can't make du'a for the things that they could ask people. Yeah, we don't have anything like that. Do I pay zakat on a 401k? If you have a 401k, there's two opinions on that. Okay. There's two opinions. If you have money in a company, the money is in a company. So you don't, it's not in your possession right now. That's the first opinion. It's on your possession. When you cash out of that company, okay, then you pay the zakat of what you cashed out on. It's like I gave Habib a whole uh, suitcase of money. I say, go make, do, go do business for me. He goes and does business. I'm not paying. I don't have. I'm not. That's like not zakatable money for me. 
It's in his possession. When he comes back, I have to pay zakat right away on, on that money. Now, the other hand, on the other hand, if you buy and sell stocks, which is not a 401k now, you're every day you're buying and selling stocks. You are not truly an investor in the company. The stock is a product for you. It's an item that you buy and sell. So then on the day of zakah that you owe zakah, you owe on the value of your stocks minus your costs of doing business. Because zakah in business, it's divided into two categories. Retail items, stuff that you buy and sell all the time, or ihtikar, which is speculation, which means I'm going to buy something and I'm going to wait for the price to go up. And that is halal for everything that is not a necessity of life. You can't do that with, with sugar, with like oil, you can do that with cars, homes. You can buy a home, fix it up a little bit, wait to the value to go up. Right? And that so that when the muhtakir, the one who speculates on a matter, buys it and waits, he doesn't pay zakat on it until the day he sells it. When he sells it, then he pays zakat. Okay? And then the, the retail, after a year, if a year passed, the retailer, though, he just, whatever he has in his shop, whether that's a digital shop like stocks or a physical shop, he just, whatever he has in stock would be zakatable right away. He just takes the inventory, pays 2.5% on that, but inventory minus all my expenses. I pay electricity, I pay payroll, I pay rent, I pay all these other things, right? And then what's left is the zakatable amount of money. Same thing with my personal wealth. If I have, let's say... Four million dollars in the bank, right? And they're just sitting there. I may spend here and there from it, do my investment here and there. So after one year, what was the lowest point I ever was was 3.7 mil. But I also have expenses. What are my expenses? I list all my expenses. I subtract my debt, my zakatable money, not sorry, not expenses, but debts. The debt that I have due. And then that's the zakatable amount. Then it's 2.5% on that. Okay. The hardest thing about calamity that shatters you is literally that it shatters the heart and leaves one numb. Though one may still believe one feels shaken, how do I recover that? That requires spirituality to recover. That may requires dhikr to recover. When you're shattered like that, you need a lot of recitation of Quran and Salah on the Prophet ﷺ. You need medicine. You really need medicine. Your heart needs medicine. That's what you need. Your heart needs, needs, needs medicine, and that medicine is heavy dosages of Salah on the Prophet ﷺ. Heavy, heavy dosages. Let me tell you something. How many people have seen the Godfather trilogy? Okay. Maybe your age, maybe not. But in my age, there's not a person in my generation that hasn't seen the Godfather trilogy. It's just like one of the, part of the culture you've seen the Godfather trilogy. All right, how about the Batman trilogy? Right? Most people saw it. Okay. Um, these days, kids watch like Captain America and the Avengers and all that stuff. Right? How many hours is that? Two, two hours a movie? One hour and a half a movie? Two. two hours. And then you watch... Like almost four hours. Yeah. Four hours. Did people watch that over a week or over a day? In one day? One, one sitting. One sitting. We're able to do stuff. We have the time and the ability to watch Endgame for four hours, two and a half hours, three hours, whatever it is. When we say intensive thicker, we mean intensive thicker, and you will find the cure. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I think it's a mindset thing because, like, if you're watching a movie, it's like, oh, that's like relaxing. And, yeah. And, but, like, I think when people think of, like, doing intensive dhikr, they're thinking of it as, like, oh, it's hard work. I mean, it, it could be hard work, but you have to think of the, the lasting effect. Yeah. Of that. It could be hard work, but sometimes you're just sitting and you're making dhikr. If someone comes in the room, they come in the room. Yeah. If you get uncomfortable sitting on the ground, sit on the couch. But just keep doing the dhikr. It, you have to do it lightly. Relax. Do it easily make it make it easy so you could do two and three hours yeah. if someone brings you a snack eat it while you're doing your thing if someone gives you a drink eat it but don't be distracted no one texts while you're watching endgame right you watch the movie no distractions 
Um, if a distraction comes to you, then that's fine. Okay. What's going on here? What are some salawat that we can use? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And then you can simply say Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi in the, in the pronoun. That's it. Is witr done like any other prayer? Witr is one rakah. Shafa is a nafila, two rakahs or more. And then witr is one rakah. How do we prove that this uncaused cause has will and, had will and intent? When talking about Imam al-Ghazali's argument for the necessary cause, the necessary source, and after deriving attributes like power intelligence, um, how do we prove that the uncaused cause had will and intent? Irada is determined by variety. The fact that there's variety in the creation indicates will, as opposed to something like this pen when it comes off the factory how does it come off all the same right all the pens are the same okay all the pens are the same but the creator never creates anything the same he has a will he has intent so intent is derived by variety or is is indicated by variety oneness is indicated by order. Power, ability, is indicated by existence itself. Our existence itself indicates his ability. Knowledge is indicated by the complexity of the creation. Okay? Hey, Habib, could you take a peek? Who's, who's drilling back there? And they better not mess up our stones. We, we, we put some very nice stones back there. I don't want anyone drilling. This is all from the Akli perspective, though, right? Because if all from the Akli perspective, Akli, then obviously we have yeah, from, from the, yeah. But, um, Who's drilling? What's going on back there, Habib? With Will, also, what I've heard is the fact that there's Neighbors one okay. existence and that we're experience, uh, experiencing reality in one way and not in another way proves that the necessary cause had a will. Yeah. And the fact that we exist, even because you already established that the necessary cause exists, the fact that we exist shows yeah. that the necessary cause obviously had to have caused us, which means that it had a will to. Uh, make that happen. Also, you you can't have knowledge without being having life, yeah. and having life, having life and knowledge would require you to have will. You cannot have something that has knowledge and life but no will. Yeah. So I think our existence basically is the co the proof for uh, the will of the necessary existence. If yeah. You go from the Akli perspective. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Can, man, can a woman read Quran on her period? Yes, but she cannot touch the mushaf unless she is a hafidha of Quran, like she's teaching always or studying always hifd al-Quran. Then she can touch in the Maliki Madhab, uh, the mushaf even as a rukhsa. If she's a regular person and she's not doing hifd, she just wants to recite the Quran, she can recite upon Haid in the Maliki school, but from a tablet or a phone or a tafsir book, a tafsir. If you notice this book here, tafsir has... The page at the top in the in the in the rectangle in the corner but how much of the less than 50 percent 75 percent of the page is tafsir and 25 percent of the page is quran therefore it's not a mushaf it's tafsir so she can read from that too the monkey on the typewriter does not have knowledge that's the difference the, the saying that it could be a mic monkey on a typewriter and it just happens to be chance is um, it does not have knowledge, right? And the creator has knowledge. Like Just look around. Look at, look at the human body. It's amazing knowledge. We exhale CO2. What do trees release? What do trees inhale? CO2. We inhale oxygen. What do trees release? Oxygen. Trees exhale and we inhale the same thing. We exhale and trees inhale the same thing. I mean, this is perfect. This is perfect. So this is knowledge. A monkey on a keyboard type of thing where random chance would result in so many failures before you ever get to a success. And we don't see that, right? Where is, like, the failure? Like, where is it that uh, things, everything is... Uh, out of whack okay next question how can a dependent item possess a quality that the independent existence is void of that's correct too as long as it's a positive quality
because we say that we cannot possess. If, the, if a human being possesses any positive quality, the creator has that quality. But we can possess a negative quality. The creator does not have that. That's also part of the perfection of the creator. We are, are ne- all of our negative qualities are the absence of perfection. Right? So the fact that we have to eat is an absence of strength. The fact that we um, you know, do the, do, do, are stingy is the absence of generosity. So. Can you talk about witr? I don't understand how to pray witr. Okay, witr is like this. At the end of the day, when you're finished your salah and you're about to go to sleep, you pray two rakas. That's called shef. You salam out. Then you pray one rakah. And that's called witr. That's it. One rakah with tashahud. That's it. That's how, that's how you pray witr. You have to be on wudu to read Quran from a mushaf. Uh, the, the wudu is necessary for holding the mushaf. Not the recitation. You can recite from memory without wudu. Not janaba, but without wudu. You can recite from a tablet without wudu. You can recite from a phone without wudu. You cannot hold the Quran. That it's the holding that requires wudu. Do we need wudu to recite from Quran with English translation on the page? If the bulk of the book if 51% or more is not Qur'an, then we don't treat it as a mushaf. Like this book here I just showed you. Is it okay to eat halal meat that came from machine cutting plant? Yes. In the Maliki school, Shafi school, not in the Hanafi school. The counter argument, says Maruf, could be other universes that we can't see are the failures. Um, so... In any, in any um, cosmology, we can only admit facts. That's a speculation. That other universes were attempts at creation, but you did not see a failure, did you? Right? You didn't see a failure. You're assuming that. So we can't assume in a cosmology. In a cosmology, we can only deal with the facts in front of us. A reality right here. Okay? So you need to give me an evidence. You can't say... In a, in a case, for example, it's like a case. You can't say, well, maybe someone came in. You ever see these Malaysian flight, all the theories on the Malaysian flight? Yeah. Well, maybe a Russian, it's fathomable. Yeah, it's fathomable that a Russian went in, redirected the plane from downstairs, took the oxygen down, and then flew it wherever he flew it. Yeah, it's fathomable, but it's not evidence. It is not evidence. Okay. It's not evidence. So that's when people say that you can think that all you want, but you cannot admit that into a cosmology, a cosmological argument. You cannot admit your speculation into a cosmological argument. Go, go imagine trying to sue Malaysia or sue Russia okay, for the death of your loved one based on the fathomability. Yes, it's fathomable, rationally fathomable, possible. That a Russian, but do you have any evidence for it? No. So it's 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 hearsay. It's nothing. Not even hearsay. Less than that. In the last rakah, do I do tahiyya and salah Ibrahimiyah? Yes. For what? Yes. Another question about which. Mm-hmm. So in the case, you know, you know, they pray like the Hanafi. They do the Hanafi with it. Mm-hmm. If, the, if a Hanafi Jamal is praying three rakahs in a row, I haven't been in that situation in a long time. No, no. You don't need to pray Jamal with the Nafil. No. no. You need to pray the Jamal if it's a Fard. Yeah. Uh, you can study all this at arcview.org. We teach fiqh. A lot of fiqh is being taught. A lot of fiqh. arcview.org. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if a Hanafi is allowed to pray one rakah with her. Does it count for him? I don't know. It should. I don't see why not. Because it's less, right? 
Everyone agrees on that. On that, they just disagree on the three altogether. Huh? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, BMW says, another Zakat question, do I pay Zakat on a piece of land? No, you do not. There's no Zakat on land. No, there is no... If if you're doing this with the intent of, of developing the land and selling it, you only pay Zakat the, de- the, the, the moment you sell it. Okay. How can I become extremely wealthy and have the doors... Of the dunya open up for me, says Jimmy Jetson. Hmm. You want to become wealthy? Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, you might not be able to handle that wealth. Wealth is harder to handle than than poverty. Okay. Hellish Razor says, "Should a person marry for piety, then wait to get attracted?" No. No. You should not marry someone that you're not attracted to because you will oppress them. And you will have a fitna because you will attract it to other people. You, you, if you're not attracted to the person, okay? Don't oppress them and marry them and oppress yourself. No. Don't do that. In fact, Imam Ahmed said, look at those who you're attracted to and then pick the one with the best deen. That's what Imam Ahmed said. You need to be attracted to your spouse. Or else you're not going to be happy. And then she's not going to be happy. Vice versa. Ibrahim Khan says, Then the companions used to make dua for salt. Yes, but what we said about the Hanafi school is that in Salah, in Salah, they do not make dua for the dunya. In Salah, I, and and by the way, ask a Hanafi because they say "kalam min kalam in nas," right? Which means that the in Salah they do not make du'a for something that they could have asked another person for. Outside the Salah, they can make that du'a, and Allah knows best. Just ask the Hanafis. If you want to be extremely wealthy, there are. We talked a lot about the principles of gaining wealth. Which involves waking up early, making a lot of istighfar, and always selling something. And then having certain qualities uh, about yourself, such as um, longevity in the process. You need, so you're not going to hit the jackpot right away. You might need some more longevity. Okay. Do you have to pray shafa? No, but you're missing out on a nefila if you skip shafa. If you pray witr by itself, one rakah by itself, is not the normal practice of people, but it, you, it will count that you prayed witr. What does one do when a spouse had withheld intimacy over a year? A spouse withheld intimacy? That's, that's divorce level stuff. A shari engineer? Yes, he was. How do you balance between dhikr and salawat? Salawat is a form of dhikr. Ramadan is a time where you recite your Quran first, then salah on the Prophet. After that. We don't leave off salah on the Prophet just because it's Ramadan, as some people imagine. You would not have Ramadan without the Prophet. Uh, Melbourne, Zilda Zin, why is the time... It's been a month. Why is the time one hour earlier? Because our time changed here in the United States. We had a time change. So that's why there's more time lag between us. Layla H, are online zakah calculators accurate? They always say me and my husband don't have to pay zakah. Should I just calculate it myself and pay zakah? So this is how you do it. You basically, you see if you reach the nisab. How much of money have you had sitting there stale, just sitting, not moving? Take that amount of money. Subtract your debts. What debts do you have? In the Madiki school, they say all your debts. In the other madhabs, they say only one month, the next payment that's due. Okay. Only the, what's due next in the next payment. What is res- left is the zakatable amount of money.
Lily Rose says, there is an element of hierarchy, the learned and inheritors of the Prophet ﷺ being at the top. And there could be extremely learned women like Sayyid Aisha. Women these days have an allergic reaction to obey. I think that um, there's cultures. I've seen cultures where, like the Egyptian culture, the man is, I could be wrong, but from what I've seen, they're not, they tend not to be bossy. Like the men tend not to be bossy. They seem like they're sharing in life. In the Shami culture, the man's a boss. I was told this, by the way. I could be wrong. But in the Shami culture, he pays for everything and he's a boss. Whereas in the Egyptian culture, it's almost like we're going to live together now, right? It's cultural. But where is the obedience necessary? Where there's going to be harm or there's sharia. That's necessary. Otherwise, you have chaos in the household. Like A man does not take permission to do something he's, his God has obligated him to do, right? If Allah Ta'ala has obligated you to, to protect your family, let's say, do you take permission before you protect your family? Uh, hey, uh, can I buy a baseball bat so I can protect the family? You need to be protected, right? No, you're obligated to protect your family. You don't have a choice. Nobody has a choice. You don't even have a choice. How are you giving anyone else a choice, right? Going to Jummah. That's fodder upon you. Getting a job. Going to work. Okay? That's fodder upon you. Okay? Having your family with you. Like, what was the purpose of getting married? No, I want to stay at my mom's. Wait, what, why did we get married then? No, you're, that's your, you're obligated to come and, and, and you can't get married and say, no, I don't really want to live with you. I'd rather live with my mom until you get yourself going. Well, why did you get married then? So there are certain things, that's the realm where we would say obligation. And that's the, ob- uh, that's the realm that I would say, it's fair to say. But the culture of oh, get me my slippers, get me my tea, I don't. I, that's something that not a lot of people. Well, not all cultures share that, right? And I don't see that. Uh, uh, so I look at it as the obligations. That's where the man himself doesn't even have the choice, right? But this thing: you go get the chai, go get the 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 food, go get bread, go get this. I haven't seen that in uh, the households that I've lived in. I haven't seen the the husbands talk like that. And I've always thought about it like the husbands in the old days, the guy came back, he just like killed a wolf on the way, right? He fought an intruder last month, right? In order to to bring food to the family, he had to travel across to China. He made trade, he came back. The guy put in such efforts that the woman could never do. So it now feels justified that he comes home, puts his feet up and gets served. Like it's totally justified. By any by anyone's standard, the most liberal person in the world, if you're sat home all day, waiting, 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 then your husband came, went, did, did, slaughtered, hunted, came and bought the meat, right? All right, you did your job. You you can sit out on you sit sit on the sideline now and relax. Now she's gonna do her job. So it is in a sense 50-52, back in the old days too, in the sense of obligations of life. I did this really hard obligation. I hunted. I waited. I did all that work. Now I brought it back. Now you do your part. I'm going to hunt it and cook it. It's not fair, right? I'm exhausted. I hunted all day. Now she's going to cook it. So that's the old days, right? And so today, when it comes to household chores and stuff, Sheikh Babikr taught us. He said that it's not the same as the old days because outside the house, if you or her were outside the house, you probably were doing the same thing, typing on a keyboard, sitting down. Like you, the physical effort is not different anymore. So there will be resentment that I put, the, she, she was from seven to five. You were from seven to five. The physical exertion is the same. Now you both came back. Why should the household operations be divided any differently? Like there doesn't seem to have any real... Uh, um, justification behind that so now if it's another thing that you're up at 5 and you're back at home at 5 and she doesn't work and she sleeps in okay that's different now right because 
she's relaxing all day. You're working all day. So that, it, 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 to me, it's common sense. Apply common sense more than anything else. But where there's obligations is where Allah put obligations. No discussion on those. Even that has to be done with lutf, though. You want someone to just obey, or you want someone to willingly love the deen too, right? So, what is Lena? Lana says, "What is the Maliki ruling on women raising their voice in prayer if they're if they are alone? They still have to raise their voice enough that they can hear themselves." Can we follow the reading of the Qur'an from a video qari? No, not in salah. You cannot follow an imam who's virtual in salah. Paying fidya for five fasts of the previous year. Can you feed five people on one day or one person on five separate days? No, it's five separate people that you have to give the fidya to. No, sorry. Um, the fidya... can go to one person on five separate days. It's the kafara that cannot go to 60, to, to the same person for 60 days. No, the kafara has to be to 60 different people. But one fidya, one poor person. One fidya, one poor person. Could be the same poor person, doesn't matter, right? But the kafara has to go to 60 different people in the Maliki school. It's Zahur time in Australia, apparently. They're, they're, they're having a Zahur of kangaroo, yeah. We got a skin right here. They sell kangaroo in the grocery? Is it white meat or red meat? I think it's red meat, right? Huh? Yeah. Animal it is. It's a very unique creature. <laughs> very unique. I saw a video of a guy fighting a kangaroo, and it was like an actual. Like, it looked like he was fighting a person. Like, Did he actually punch like, the kangaroo? Yeah, and the kangaroo punched him too. They were. He was punching wow. him, and then he grabbed the kangaroo and he dropped him. And like, yeah, it's so crazy. Like the fact that that's an animal. Car aristocrat. Everything else you can do virtually besides salah. You can make dua behind an imam virtually. And when you listen to lectures, it's as if you're in their sohbah. You're getting the same reward that the people who are sitting there are getting. In terms of benefits, even though you, don't, you can't feel it, you count as one of them. Junaid M. For Hanafis, you cannot make dua in salah with a language other than Arabic. That's correct. Only, that's only in the Maliki school. In Tarawih, can we hold up a mushaf to follow along the imam? No, we cannot. Not in any madhab. Because you can only move. Movement is only necessary for a need. You can lead the salah by holding a mushaf in the Maliki, in the Shafi'i, and the Hanbali school. You can pray alone by holding a Qur'an. But you cannot do that to follow along. Because you have no need to follow along. Right? You don't need to read behind the imam. وبال أسحارهم يستغفرون. Everything بال أسحار is double and triple and ten times. Al أسحار is the little bit period of time before Fajr, and everything of the أسحار is doubled, tripled, more powerful, especially the istighfar. Is it bad to look for a spouse during Ramadan? Not at all. Why would it be? It's one of the good deeds of life to look for a spouse. How are you looking for a spouse, though? Muzz match, um, scrolling through different profiles and really with a crooked intention, that's the, what's going to be sinful. But the idea of uh, making dua, of looking for a wife is acceptable in Ramadan. Can I make dua, personal dua in English? Outside, for, for, for the Madikis, yes, in Salah and outside of Salah. For the Hanafis, outside of Salah but not inside Salah. That's the difference.
How do you manage making dua when breaking the fast when surrounded by people in the masjid? You just have to ignore them. Go in the corner. Go somewhere else. Ignore them. Go into a separate room. Shut your eyes so we can't make eye contact with people. Should someone pray with it if they have to, salah to make up? Yes. You still pray with it. Um, someone here is saying about the Shafi'iyya, Ahmed W. Ahmed W., are you saying that the Shafi'iyya can hold the Quran as a muqtadi to follow what the Imam is doing? Interesting. We'll ask about that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to stop here. Last question. What is your opinion on a husband who doesn't like getting his wife a gift on Eid? She doesn't have high expectations and doesn't care, but once in a while would like small from his something small from his heart. Uh, make dua for that sister. She's got a stingy husband. You want to destroy love in a relationship? Be stingy. Terrible. Do not be stingy as a husband. Um, stinginess, is the Prophet ﷺ said, the one characteristic that washes away all of your flaws is generosity. And the one characteristic that will wipe away all of your good deeds is stinginess. Why be stingy? He thinks it's a bid'ah? Oh, who said that? So, did not the Prophet ﷺ say, Tahad wa tahabu. Yeah, it's a bid'ah if you think it's like a sunnah or something, but that belief is not there. It's not a sunnah. The Prophet said, Tahadu, Tahabu. Give gifts to people, you will come to love each other. So, should we do it on every day except Eid? So, it's va- is, is it is it it's okay to do that in the middle of Ramadan? Yes. In the middle of Shawwal? Yes. But on Eid, you won't. It doesn't have to be like establishing a sunnah. You're not establishing a sunnah, but... Around that time, something, Yanni. Stinginess is just not good. Um, Omar, uh, is stinginess, you think of that, that Y should be an I? Just, That's what I get at first, right? Yeah. Stingy, stingy yeah, stingy by itself is with a Y. Um, I have old Qada to pray, but I still want to pray Tarawiyah. No, you can go to the masjid if you're going there, but or at Tarawiyah time, you pray a qada. There's no tarawih for someone who owes qada. You do you do qada in everything. It duha time qada, right? Everything you do qada. The only thing that you can do is witr, Eid, istisqa, khusuf. Um, did we say istikhara and dua al haja salat al haja. All right, ladies and gentlemen, jazakumullahu khairan. We'll see you Monday. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-lazina amanu wa aminu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our siyam this month of Ramadan. To give us consistency. To give us strength. To answer our dua. And to inspire us to... What is the best guidance for us? Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Oh